Well, hi everybody. This is Al Spath on Positive Poker Insiders. Today we got a special guest with us, and I think he's coming from up in Connecticut way. This is Paul Darden. You're 19. Let me see. Let me see. I'm not going to say 19. I'm going to say 2001 uh, seven card stud WSOP champion. Is that right, Paul? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. And that was like for 100 and. Forty-seven, one hundred and forty-nine thousand dollars at that time. A hundred and yeah, forty-seven and change, I think. It was For, too long ago to remember. And but and next year is gonna be is gonna be in a million. The seven stud will. No, not the seven stud. Just throughout the World Series, I'm going and putting my uh, boots and. and Well, that sounds great for all of us. Uh, Paul's coming to us over the telephone today, so if, if any of the sound is a little bit muffled, it's just because Al's using uh, old technology here. But uh, let's go back to that those days. Let's go back to the days when you were sitting at the table. When I got first introduced to you on TV screen, you were sitting with Gus Hansen and John Uwanda and Phil Ivey. Is Phil Ivey still your mentor or was your mentor? Well, he was my mentor. Now, uh, we, like, two different sides of the world. <laughs> I've been struggling, and he's been just striving. Well, I, I think that we all we all go ups and downs, and, and it's how you deal with them, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And I know I'll be back. I just have to go through the swings, different things, different times new times and just having to get back into poker from the beginning. I've been playing a lot of small sticks just to just get my uh, just fight back, you know, because I feel it like when, when, when you're first starting off and you, you're more naive and you don't know, know the game as much, you're more careless, you don't care, and you're rely a lot on luck. So I'm, I'm trying to take that approach back to the beginning. Well, I, I think that's a good approach to it. I think that, you know, sometimes uh, the game changes on us and sometimes we have to adapt to the game. The game that you were introduced back in the earlier days has, has evolved since then. And I noticed a quote from you recently where it said that, you know, uh, luck... Um, was playing a factor uh, nowadays. I mean, I think it was on Facebook. I mentioned that you mentioned that. Yes, it is. You see, everybody play no no limit today. They're trying to go all in and hope they don't get a call. But if they do, they're gonna see all the cards and they rely on a luck. Doesn't matter what they have. You know, they leave it up to God. Although he's in charge anyway. But they solely lose, leave it right up to just that, the luck factor. And it, it's hard to outplay someone or bluff someone today. You know, today and part of the adjustment is to take the hand slow. Don't, don't rely on the luck of the cards. Play the hands out, go slow. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. One turn at a time. The difference, you know, you won your bracelet, like I mentioned earlier, the 2001 uh, 7 stud, which is a limit game. And, you know, limit games have kind of been phased out, except for the World Series. You can, but how about up at Foxwoods where you go? Can you still get a 7 stud limit game or any limit games up there at Foxwoods? Oh, yeah, all the time. They play 2040. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, they play at 75, 150. The stud games are still back this way east. The Bagada has them, and Foxwoods has the best stud games going. You know, you can play all the way from the bottom to the top. They have a 1 to 3 all the way to a 75, 150 stud going on the weekends, every weekend. Were you more a stud high player or a high low player? I was more so a stud high player, but I love I love high low as well. Uh -huh. But they don't play stud high low as much in live action in the casino. Sometimes they have mixed games, but uh, yeah, other than that, just regular stud they play. And I love it. I grew up on it. Could play it in my sleep. 
That's my favorite. Today, because everybody has been playing and learning and evolving. And sure. Again, you need a card to just come your way. Yeah. When's the last time you were rolled up? Ooh, that's again. That just gives you chills, doesn't it, to be rolled up? Huh? <laughs> For those of you out there that don't know stud, that means you're you're starting out with three of a kind. You got two underneath and one up, up that that matches. And matter of fact, when you talk about seven stud, you talk about getting quads, and nobody ever can see it. They don't see any pairs on the board, and you still can hold quads at the end. It's a great game for everybody, and I think that. Uh, I wish to see more of it. On, you're never going to see it on TV. It just it doesn't make for good filming because of uh, some factors. But um, it's a great game, everybody out there. And uh, Paul's up in. You're still living in New Haven, Connecticut. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. And I read something about some being a nightclub owner and a music promoter. You still doing any of that, or have you you put any of your uh, your friends t to doing that, you know? Did you sell interest in that, or do you still got that going? No, I, I sold I sold my interest out. Oh, okay. That, but um, I'm getting back a little bit. Uh, I'm talking to a, a gentleman about managing him. You know, he, he's coming out in the music career, so we negotiate. I might be. Yeah, I know. You just signed on with uh, Raymond Davis at realgrinders.com. I just read that the other day. That's some breaking news, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's going to be a good thing. So I want you guys out there listening to this on social media, on Facebook and Twitter and everything, you know, hook up uh, Paul. Uh, check him out over at uh, realgrinders.com when that kicks off. Raymond Davis is running that, and they, got, they signed up a, a few other pros. I, I'm not aware of the names at this particular time because I was following Paul, but I saw his name and I was happy to see that. Um, that's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the tables on you a little bit here. Get away from poker. We'll come back to it in just a second. But American Idol, I understand that you're Team Fantasia. Is that right? Yeah. She's still she's still she's still your your favorite out of everybody. The 15 years is over now. She's the favorite. Well, I'm not gonna say she's a favorite. I, that you like that that made it. That my favorite truly was. I loved the Jennifer Hudson as well. Yeah, when when Simon Cowell told her you're nothing but a cruise ship uh, singer, lounge singer, back when she finished, I think seventh or something like that. I couldn't I couldn't believe it at that time. That I thought she should have finished higher. I don't know if she should have won that year, but. I thought that was a, a bad comment out of him, and, and she's proven him and everybody wrong with her Oscar and everything else that she's done. I always liked, um, oh, I always liked Carrie Underwood, be, and I know she'll always be a star and everything. But I liked Ruben, and I, I really thought that Ruben was gonna really hit it in stride, and and, uh, and I, he had some real health issues. But sometimes health issues hits all of us. Have, has a health issue hit you in your career? good I know I saw you laughing on Facebook one day uh, something got got my attention and I, I'm a big Bernie Mac fan you know he died at 50 and died way too young but I guess it was a uh, I think it was a it was either a kid in a, uh, a in a hallway he was imitating Bernie uh, Bernie Mac and Cat Williams you remember that Excellent. It was great. Yeah. You were looking at it, you would think it was them actually doing it. Any, 
was doing it for a girl. He was trying to impress a girl by a locker or something, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 by a locker, buddy. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's something that talent, you know, the young talent today is out here. The world is, I mean, really evolving. I mean, it's, it's something else, it's special. Yeah, well, let's turn back to, to Poco. And I got a name I want to throw at you. And tell me what this person means to you. Amnon Philippi. That's Who is my it? name, man. Like I said, uh, that's the guy I helped uh, better his poker career when he was playing and, and still playing. But, you know, I love him like a brother. You know, he, 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 he's better than me. He, he's a phenomenal player. He had he, a win a bracelet, too, at the World Series. Series next year as well. He, he will pick up Rachel. And you're his. You you were his mentor, or still are? Yeah, yeah. We 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 have talk when you know when we see each other. But yeah, absolutely. That's my name, man, right there. Well, good. I'm That's glad. I'm glad. I'm glad I read about him and brought it up. I I can tell. Not even seeing your face, I can I can tell there's a smile on your face because he means a lot to you. <laughs> well, later on, you give me his uh, Facebook. I'll look him up if he's got a Facebook page, or if you give me his email later on, I'll I'll send him a copy of this, and we'll we'll, we'll make his day too. Is that's okay with you? Absolutely, absolutely. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's go back. Um, influences. Who influenced you when you first started out? You know, I know that Paul worked. Uh, I mean, uh, um, Phil was a mentor of sorts, but was there anybody that was on the scene that took time out to, to say, hey, kid, you know, uh, you could be better if you did this, or was there anybody that stepped in, or did you have to just do it by hard knocks on your own? Well, like I said, when I was a kid, my father owned the pool hall, mm -hmm. and I, he told me any and everything about poker, although I didn't play No Limit. But he told me all about poker, regular and seven cards, because that's what they played in the pool hall and yeah. everything. But yeah. when they came to No Limit, I have to say it was Phil Ivey. Phil Ivey. He, he pulled me in and he said, this is the game, this is the future, and you'll do and have and be where you want to be right through this game right here and look at him now today. So, there's, there's no surprise on where he's at <laughs> with it right. and the rest is history and will be come next year because I tell you, no limit. I'm gonna, like I said, do my thing at the World Series back to the basic and just Take in all the mental thoughts, notes, and writing it down so I know what, how, and why. That's why so many no namers is winning it at the World Series because of the love, mm -hmm. the the lack of knowledge. You know because pros are lay a hand down where they know they they beat. Sure. An amateur will not because they don't know the lady hand down. And they ain't get lucky with their hit. Even if they not all in on 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 the pre flop or the flop or even the turn. Right. They still don't see that river card because they, they don't know no better. And <laughs> that's what sometimes it takes them be to have the heart to go the distance. Well, I, I think you got the determination to, to do very well there. I'll tell you two quick things about Phil Ivey. One, I wrote an article. I used to work for Poker School Online. I was the dean there, and I wrote an article one time, and I named him actually in the article before anybody else as he was the Tiger Woods of, of poker, and that was in one of my articles. And, and then one day he told a story, as I know it, that he was playing in Atlantic City, and you know the stud games were, were were badass at that time at the Trump and, and, and Taj Mahal and stuff like that. 
but he went out he went out and lost uh, four hundred thousand dollars in one day not just the stud but he lost four hundred thousand went home to his wife at that time and she had just got into poker and she played an online tournament and the way i understand it she finished first over like four thousand players and he asked her how much she won and she said like i don't know it was four dollars or something like that it was like pennies you know people enter it and everything and he couldn't tell her that he just lost four hundred thousand dollars. He was he made her feel really good about her big win because she beat all these people, and I thought that was pretty nice of him to do that, even though he had just taken taken one right right across the bow. You know what I mean? Well, that's one thing when he told me about the game, and he taught me mm -hmm. early on. He said, "You know what? You're gonna take swings." But the thing about how you take the swings is don't let it affect you or bother you. And when it do, you go home mm -hmm. and you, 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 you lock yourself away from the world to lick your wounds. But don't worry about it because it's all going to come around. When it come around, you'll win a hundred more times than you lose and, and, and the money as well. Mm-hmm. Never mind the, the loss because you'll win a hundred times the, the, the win when someone that don't know how to play, right. don't know how to bet their hands and, to, and know how to make the money, you will. Like where you see so where people don't know when to raise and you know what I'm saying, when to re-raise, to move someone or to have someone, uh, you know, they, they might have you buy a big, a big pair, but you still have a huge draw with three cards to come. If you're on an open and straight flush draw and you have still two over cards, somebody got queens, you got the ace and king over the two queens, so you, you just pound and pound and make them pay for the hope that you miss. Mm -hmm. They have the best hand, but you have the best you had the best potential on overall and so many outs to beat that hand where you, you, you're the beat aggressor. I hear uh -oh. that. I hear that. I can just, I can hear it and I, and I know the, the, the people that are listening to this can hear it in your voice and I, you can tell that adrenaline starts to pump when you, you're like that, that cat. You know, and it's and going to just pounce on the mouse or the cat in, the, in, in Africa to, to get his prey. I mean, I, you can just hear it in your voice that, you know, if you get the right circumstances, you got to take the action and you got to commit. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. You got to always be to make the absolute match on your hands. And when someone don't know how to play their hands, you can lose the absolute minimum. That's right. And that's what determines a good player and a great player and an average player. Absolutely. Well, listen, Paul, I got a couple more things here, but I want, I want, you know, having talked to you and you were one of my idols as I was uh, entering into poker, and I'm a lot older than you, but I saw you on TV and, and, and I kind of had this fondness for you at the table. There was something about your demeanor. There was something about... You know, I come from the streets of New York. You came from the streets up there. You came from a pool hall. My dad used to come from a a, a, a bar room, you know, and think just, just little things, but it connected us. And I'm a poker coach, and, and I'll offer you this right now, and everybody can hold me to it on it. When you get ready to go to the World Series next year, before, if you need any kind of tune-up or anything like that, I got a free offer for you that I'll shadow you on on a table online and and. and get some thoughts from you and, and we'll just fine tune that game, get you in that mental attitude. If nobody else is out there that is available to assist you in any of that, I'm here. It's free as much as it takes and we'll, we'll, we'll get you ready. I, I'm a big supporter of yours. I want you to know that. I appreciate what you've done for the industry and what you've done for poker. No, thank you. I appreciate it because sometimes I, I feel the same way that you might need someone right there shadowing you in your corner, helping you make all the right decisions because as you're playing, you're sitting, time and everything, you, your mind do get fried and, and, and you get tunnel vision and you're blocked and all everything, all kinds of emotions run through you in your mind that you got to stay fresh and sometimes you, you want to get up and you have somebody in the corner just like a ref. Uh, I mean, not like a, a corner man, 
Yeah. Just to talk, go over it, tell them about a hand, a situation. That's right. What you think about this and what you think about that. That's that's exactly what it's and we call it in the business as coaches we call it occupational blindness you get to see it so many times that it becomes a blur sometimes and sometimes you can overlook some things because it's so it happens so many times and sometimes we just take things for granted so sometimes when somebody else points it out you say you know what I hadn't even been thinking about that. that's the edge I needed that and, and there's an edge here and there's an edge here and all of a sudden you've got all these edges working for you again all the pistons are firing and you're thinking about everything that's going on at the table because you know, so many people sit down, as you said, and they play with luck, and they're one-dimensional, or maybe two-dimensional, but sometimes you've got to be three, four, fifth, fifth dimension. You know what I mean? You've got to be thinking ahead. you got like a chess game, and I think that's where you sharpen your skills before you go out to a place like Vegas with somebody or, or a team of people, and it, it pays off for you as, as the player. And uh, I think uh, if you want to do something like that later on, Hook, you know, I'll hook you up and, and we'll do it right online. I live here in Maryland, you live up there, but we can do it online and, and I can I can provide you shadowing and, and we'll we'll just tune that game up. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will appreciate it. And now uh, I feel as I got your number. <laughs> so I, don't don't be surprised when I call on you. Oh no, there's don't, no I, I I don't want nothing for free. Because I want you I want uh, you know what I mean? And everything to me is like a marriage. I've been with my wife. She was my girl. Everything for over 20 years. So I, I'm committed. You know? Yeah. I, I, well, well, 20 years I, and we... I don't... Huh? Go, no, 20 years and you would talk about... Before we came on the air, I wished you uh, your firstborn there, Whitney Marie, uh, a birthday wish. So uh, uh, how many children do you have with that lovely wife? Uh-huh. Because I was young and I was a girlfriend before and everything and life things happen. Sure. I'm four total. But you I'm four total. And but I you look one, out for all of them, I'm don't one. you? You look out for all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah. My youngest she's sixteen and she doing me proud, you know, and she wanna go abroad. Rock it on. Nice. And, uh, she, I like I said, she gonna, I say it every day, she gonna do me proud, do me special. She will, she, kids, she will. All my kids are doing good things, you know, they, you know, not in the trouble and none of that. Well, they but, got a great role model. They got a great role model and that, that helps and it's not just you, you know, the, the rest of the family. It, it, it all it all uh, provides an atmosphere for them to grow and, and learn and go to school and achieve. And speaking of that, I was listening to one of the videos you put up on Facebook. Um, I think the gentleman's name was Dr. Umar Johnson. Is that, am I pronouncing that right? Uh, Umar Johnson. It was about blacks competing and and uh, competing. And, and the wealth was uh, was to replace the self-worth. That was a wonderful uh, video he did. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can say, it, it, you know, just seeing stuff online, I share it because a lot of things, I, I, I'm not going to say I agree with, but it just things that make you say, hmm, make you think. It opens the um, conversation. It opens up the conversation. Nobody wants to talk in America about it. They just want to have action and everything, and they don't want to talk about it. Right, right, absolutely. That's that's what everything about, and it's good, you know, just thoughts and opinions and how people think about things, and, it, you know, it, it just, it's good. It's good for the world to just take, you know, take part in, in, in things of the world, you know what I'm saying? In situation, how sure. we can better the world, you know? That's right. Because, you know, like someone said, just like in the Olympics, how uh, they asked the young black girl, uh, and she said, Black Lives Matter. I said, Well, see, my thing is they would have asked me, All Lives Matter. Sure. I, I'm not, I, I don't feel this. But it's just black lives. I say all lives matter. You know, you ask me, I say all lives matter. I, I mean, 
And that's there, and, and that's, that's right. And, that's you right. Know, yeah. The crimes don't make no sense, a lot of it in the world, but it's still, it is what it is, you know. We got to do things and the right things, like I put online where I show where a guy did and have where uh, when you're being pulled over by the police, a uh, way you should, uh, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, you should... Uh, how you act, how, how you how you like, present. Like how you should approach right. the situation when you know the police pull you over, you keep your hands on on the stand wheel, you make sure you have no music on, you turn off your your um, car, and, and, and you act accordingly, you know what I mean? You just, you give respect so you can give respect. Sometimes, you know, it's just a little thing, you know. Yeah, sometimes we all may get out of hand and out of place or think, well, what you doing or how you doing, you have no right doing. Or however, but in all, it's still best to be calm, polite, and courteous when, 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 when you're dealing with a superior that's looking out and supposed to look out this is true. This is my personal feeling. This is true. This is true. No, I, I agree with you 100. percent There's some good people, whether they be in football or poker or policemen. There's also some some bad folks out there, and we got to weed those out and everything. I like what they did down in Dallas after the shooting, and that they said, "Yeah, we've got a problem here between the two groups. Uh, well, why don't you sign up? We'll take." 20,000 applicants and we'll make, uh, we'll integrate you into the police force and therefore we can have more diversity and we can deal with some of these problems and better community outreach. And I think that's a solution, at least that's, that's trying to incorporate the, the folks that think they're uh, not getting the support or not getting the security that they deserve or the respect, in a lot of cases it's the respect then they'd be on the other side of the glass and they can take a look at it and see and maybe offer some things through the academies and stuff like so they can reach out and deal with with the young youth that don't have any place to go after school or or whatever the case may be you know yes exactly it's it's a solution it's it's, good to open up to try to help one another out out because you can't can't nobody do it say oh it's just the police oh it's it's the people, you know, it, it got to be a meeting in the middle, you know, it got to come together. Absolutely, to, to absolutely, you're right, help you're right. one another out, you know, we all trying to get along and live our lives and do right, because, I mean, to, you know, you know, I'm, I, I'm a black, I'm African American, but uh, I know how it is out in the street. So is um, one. Of, so is one of my. Gr- be extra careful. So is one of my granddaughters and one of my grandsons. They are black also, and uh, they're 13 years old. And my daughter and my son-in-law tell them all the time, "Listen, you're going to be driving a car pretty soon, and you need to watch what's going on, and you need to be behaving yourself because they don't want that call in the middle of the night, and and no 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 parent wants a call in the middle of the night. So and Sometimes it's for somebody that's not even doing anything wrong, and that's the stuff that we have to get rid of. That's the injustice of it all. If somebody pulls a gun, that's a different story. But when someone just gets pulled over because of the color, then we got a problem that it can get out of hand because you don't know who's the person with the gun is the person that's in charge, and you don't know what they're going to do, you know?
And then when when they do have a badge, they think they want to get home safe at night. So therefore, you know, adrenaline and, and fear have them reaching for the firearm. So, you know, to protect, protect their life, protect their partner life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, therefore, yep. I say it and I, I get put online. You got to do little things to help them help you, period. That's right, and you don't know if they just came from some bad scene where they had uh, murders or whatever, or you know they could have, a, have been having a really bad day themselves, and so you know not that doesn't justify anything. So you don't know who you're going to get when you get pulled over. So you, the best thing is to do is take the high road, exactly what you said. I got two last questions. I'll let you go. I know I said I'll leave. I, I I'd keep you at thirty. We're just at over thirty right now. What do you think of the don't shot? Don't worry about it. I got time. What do you think of the shot clock? You know, they started entering the shot clock where you get so much time to act so people can't go on the tank for 10 minutes. That was good because a lot of it just for show mm -hmm. on the camera, the TV on them, knowing that they're going to lay a hand down, knowing that it's just to make it seem like they had a hand when they never did. So it's good. Okay. It's good, you know, it, it uh, just... Do away with all the nonsense. And the last question I got is, what do you think about the fact that Howard Letterer and Chris Ferguson showed up for the World Series this year, and Howard put out that letter of apology for what happened over at Full Tilt? How you do you take it as a as a poker pro? What what happened? What went down? And what they're trying to do now? gonna give back a return no money or try to do anything really to make up you know words words are just that words people want to see more so action yeah. you did and you took and, you, and if you robbed or crooked did crooked things for millions of dollars you know do a nice gesture you know to the Pope of world mm-hmm I don't know, I, I'm not, I don't know in what kind of way, but, you know, that, that's more so than just mouthing your sorry, you know, because just like you're mouthing your sorry, you could be laughing at, at the same time, it's fast you turn your head. That's 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 very true. I remember an old TV show. I don't know if you remember Robert Blake on Beretta, and he said, don't do, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. That was a good show. That was a really good show. I, I used to enjoy that so much. Well, listen, everybody, this is Al Spath on Positive Poker Insiders. You can find us on Twitch TV, and you can go up to YouTube and just put in my name, Al Spath, or Positive Poker Insiders. I got over 250 free instructional videos on tournaments and cash games and things like that and you can enjoy them and improve your game and one day you could in fact be as good as Paul Darden our special guest today the 2001 bracelet winner a seven car stud and Paul it's been my honor to have you on the show today and I, I will get in touch with you and we'll do some stuff shadowing and uh, I'll, I'll really enjoy that okay I thank you very much you know what I mean it was a pleasure it was all mine Thank you, sir, and have a great day. You too, you too. All right, we're out, folks. Bye now.